Hi, it's Mac at Plumbing Deals. I had a coworker mention to me that their sump pump only works when they plug it in. Immediately, this spoke to me and I said, something's wrong there. We should get a brand new sump pump from Zoller and take a peek at what's going on. And I am not in a dungeon. I'm actually in my coworker's basement. It's nice here. Uh, this sump pump is, I don't know who did this initially, but they made a lot of mistakes. I'm assuming they're common mistakes that everyday homeowners and maybe uh, father-in-laws can potentially do. I'm not gonna be able to fix everything that's wrong with it, but I'm at least gonna make it so the sump pump will be plugged in all the time and working properly. So let's start by removing the old sump pump and we'll get our new guy in the mix. One of the first issues I saw immediately when I got down here was the fact that on our discharge line for the sump pump going out of the house, we don't have a check valve in here at all. And then when the float on the sump pump ends up telling our sump pump, hey, the water level is low in here, you can turn off, it turns off and all the water that's in this comes right back down and there's nothing stopping it from going directly back into the pit, which will cause that pump to turn on and off frequently and you end up burning out your pump pretty quickly. So we're gonna get this cut and then we'll add in a check valve. I ended up grabbing a Zoller quiet check valve. It's clear, just to think that's kind of fun. We get to watch it work. I think these are really cool and you get to see it. Who doesn't love that? I'm just gonna use my Milwaukee hacksaw as a 12 volt. You can see it's seen some miles. This guy has seen some use. There's a lot of hard water in this area. I think they might even have their water softener and discharging into this, which isn't great. Not my house, not my problem though. Same thing with the weeping walls. Can't win them all. But make sure you have an assortment of PVC fittings if you're doing this, PVC primer and glue. And we'll kind of cover the basics. The one thing I wanna make sure we have on this install specifically is gonna be a weep hole, which is gonna be below the check valve, close to our pump. We'll get this kind of disassembled really quick and go from there. All right, so if this was a normal reinstall and everything was actually piped right, really you can get away with just having a nut driver so you can get in there and undo whatever check valve is available, unless it's one of the fancy PVC union ones. And then we could actually wrench out the MIP from the old pump and you'd be able to just get your pipe wrench on there and then work that loose. In my experience, these should come out pretty easy. There shouldn't really be anything like Teflon tape or pipe dope or a sealant on this MIP going into the sump. So this should be nice and easy just to squeeze out. This is a Zoller M63. It's the pump we're gonna be installing today. Crack this thing open, take a quick peek at it. Right away, you see that beautiful Zoller green? Love seeing that. Really the only thing in the box it's gonna be instructions, warranty stuff, and our pump. Nice little float here, and our cord. So once you have your measurement, we'll cut our PVC and then glue our MIP. I've already taken some measurements. I know right where to cut, because not a barbarian, little PVC shear. Gives you a really nice clean cut every single time. You don't have to worry about little barbs or anything weird. All right, we're just gonna prime our fittings. The brand new, so I don't really have to go ham on them. Kind of get our MIP hanging out there. Prime our pipe. Let's get a little glue on that. Let's get a little glue on this. Get this guy on with a nice little twist and a push and we hold. Perfect. Pretty good. Then we're just gonna lower this bad boy down. Check the location of my weep hole, make sure it's kind of going away from the pump, that's great. Oh yeah. If you notice, there's a bunch of weird stuff on the bottom of your sump pit, kind of like I got here. There's a really nice solution to make sure debris and sediment and stuff that's on my hands right now that I'm gonna put back in the sump pit doesn't end up in your pump. 
that's gonna end up being a Zoller pump stand. I also wonder what that random red thing floating around in the pit is, but we can't win them all. I think I have this. I know height-wise, this is gonna be great. I wanna make sure that the pump is stable. And that feels pretty good. I know a lot of people end up using cinder blocks or pavers. I'm gonna take the more civilized approach. I just think it's the best way to go. I got the whole thing dry fit. Highly recommend dry fitting because we've all made a bad measurement or two. Beautiful, first try. We're gonna take all of this apart, glue it all back together and get our pump. This is the big one you wanna make sure you take a lot of time and prime the living daylights out of. Cause older PVC, it's gonna get some gunk on it. Always easy to adapt, you just wanna make sure it's primed and cleaned properly. Make sure you've deburred it. So your fitting goes on nice and easy and there's no blockage. For this guy, I'm gonna recommend popping this off. You see it's got a nice little gasket in there, so it's a compression gasket. You don't need any Teflon tape or anything on the threads of the valve. That gasket will go in there and make our seal for us. Good amount of glue on the actual guy right there. Get a little glue on our pipe. Make sure you slide this over the pipe first, then do your fitting. Get that nice twist and you'll feel it kind of stick. I'm just gonna keep going there. Love the look of that. If you forget to do that, you're gonna be in big trouble. You're gonna have to cut it, redo it, pain in the butt. Never forget. up with a wrench for now while we're getting everything glued in it's gonna be totally fine and now the fun part getting our 45s lined up and getting that chunk of pipe in This is always the tricky part. Let's start with a little glue down here. A little glue right there. Get some glue up here. And of course, some glue on the pipe. Now we're gonna do a fun thing where we're gonna get this puppy in that way. Not bad. Probably want a backer on this. I'm just praying for the best. I like wrapping the cord a little bit around our pipe. Make sure it can't go anywhere. I also have some zip ties we'll use so we can officially secure the cord because that's always important. And let's see how we did. Did that stick open? All 
All right, so we're wrapped up for now. We got a couple of zip ties here on the cord, making sure the cord stays in place. Because if you have a cat like mine, he's nibbling on cords, and I can see Pierre just getting up here, biting on that cord. But more importantly, we got a part two video coming soon. The amount of sediment in the bottom of this pit is doing a fun thing where it's actually leaving our check valve open. It's not what we want. I pulled this apart twice and I keep pulling more sediment out. So we're gonna get the pump stand for the next video. And the other thing I wanna get, just so we're all good, in addition to that pump stand, oh, it was important, I was thinking about it, a lid, because that's really important. There's no lid on this. It's probably part of the reason so much sediment gets in this anyway. They're sweeping, debris from the floor. It's an old farmhouse is what I'm gonna tell you. It's just old, you know? They have some other issues to kind of take care of in the meantime too, like this water weeping in from the walls. We got this set for now. We'll see you in part two.